Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome to our daily lectionary reading and devotional. This Bible passage for today comes from Acts 27 verses 13 through 38, and it tells the story of a perilous and grueling sea voyage taken by the Apostle Paul and his traveling companions. As I began reading the passage for today, I couldn't help but see many striking analogies between the story of this journey and what we have been experiencing during this time of pandemic. So I'm going to do something a little different this week, and instead of reading the passage in its entirety at the beginning, I'm instead going to break it up, reading it side by side with my own personal narrative of the last few months. So we will begin with the first verses of Acts 27 verses 13 through 38. A mild breeze out of the south came up, and sensing this was a good omen, they weighed anchor and sailed close to the shore of Crete. Before long, a hurricane-force wind called a northeaster struck down on them from across the island. The ship was enveloped by the storm and couldn't be turned into the wind, so we had to give way to the wind and allow ourselves to be driven along by its force. We heard about the coronavirus weeks before it was in our own backyard, months even. I remember vividly talking with a friend about what was happening across the world from us, aching for what they were going through, but at the same time feeling entirely disconnected from it. I couldn't even begin to imagine what living in quarantine would feel like. Then, became the mild, then came the mild breeze, cases showing up in our own county, the uncertainty beginning. Yet still, it didn't feel serious. I washed my hands, I didn't have a cough, everything would be okay. But in what felt like only moments, everything rapidly changed. The hurricane force wind struck. Everything was canceled. Stay home orders were made, and we were thrown up into a storm unlike any I'd ever seen, with no choice but to be driven along by its force. As we ran along the leeward side of the island, known as Clada, we managed with difficulty to gain control of the ship's dinghy. Next, they passed cables under the ship itself. Then, for fear of running aground on the shallows of Citrus, they lowered the sea anchor and let themselves be driven along. We were being buffeted by the storm so violently that on the next day they tossed some of the cargo overboard. On the third day, they tossed the ship's gear overboard with their own hands. For several days, neither the sun nor the stars were visible, while the storm was assailing us. At last, we gave up all hope of surviving. Over the weeks following the stay-home order, we started to find our new routines. In a matter of days, we shifted Messiah into a temporary online ministry format, and we attempted, in our own various ways, to gain control of our current situation. But though we found new ways to make the situation work, there was nothing easy about it. I mourned all my canceled plans, worried over loved ones, stressed over the chaotic mess of our house, grieved for all those who were losing their jobs, and unfairly, yet cruelly, berated myself for not doing enough. While I wouldn't say I was ever really without hope, there was certainly a great deal of bleakness mixed about my days. Then, when they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them. Friends, he said, had you heeded my advice and not set out from Crete, you would not have suffered all this loss, all this damage. But now I ask you to hold on to your courage. For none of you will be lost, only the ship. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul. You are to stand trial before Caesar, so God has granted you the safety of all who sail with you. So take heart, friends, for I believe the events will take place just as I have been told. We are to run aground on an island. Time and time again, I've grown frustrated seeing the way this pandemic has played out versus how it could have played out if we had been better prepared. There are steps we can take to protect our communities, to keep everyone safe and healthy, yet why still are there so many people not listening? Why should money come before people? Why, if we can stay inside, would we not? Yet alongside the frustrations were daily reminders of hope and love, too. Neighbors going above and beyond to find ways to care for one another. Creativity, finding ways to extend love from home to home. And despite the frustrations and angers I'd feel, the gratitude I felt and the love I witnessed managed, always managed to overpower it. The way our society functions may change. Our ship may be lost. 
but that won't change the fact that we belong to one another and that we will always find ways to love. After another two weeks, we were still drifting and in the Adriatic Sea by now. The crew sensed that we were near land. They took surroundings and measured 20 fathoms. A little while later, they measured 15 fathoms. So, for fear of running aground on a reef, they set out four anchors from the stern and prayed for the sun to rise. The crew then tried to abandon ship. They lowered the dinghy into the water with the pretext that they were going to lay out anchors from the bow. But Paul said to the centurion and his soldiers, If the crew doesn't stay aboard, you won't be saved. So the soldiers scuttled the dinghy by cutting its ropes. The expected weeks of quarantine have turned to months, and it has grown heavy. We're seeing glimpses now of getting back to normal. Here in Montana, the lakes are filling up with people on sunny days, and re the restaurants have been reopened. It is so tempting to stop staying home. I want so badly for this to all just end. It's easy to convince myself that no harm can come of everything opening up, because I want so badly for that to be true. I want to have weekly church services again. I want to go on our mission trips this summer and to have my big family, extended family camping weekend. I want this pandemic to be over, but unfortunately, this is all out of any of our hands. Instead, we are left with the harder, less agreeable choice of caution, the choice to continue to distance ourselves in an attempt to keep each other safe. A little before daybreak, Paul urged them all to eat something. For the last two weeks, he said, you have been under constant tension and have eaten nothing. I urge you to have something to eat. There is no doubt about your safety. Not a hair on your head will be lost. With this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God while standing before them all. Then he broke the bread and began to eat. They were all encouraged by this and began to eat as well. In all, there were 276 aboard. After that, they had all had their fill. They lightened the load by tossing the wheat overboard. We still don't really know what the next weeks, months, or even year will bring. We're st we're, we're, we are still in the midst of the storm, so to speak. There is much to grieve, much to be frustrated with and angry about, and there is also creativity, love, and hope to be found. What I do know is that together apart, we need one another. In the midst of the uncertainty and my constant mixed bag of emotions, I am also reminded that the bread has been broken and shared with me, that I am part of the body of Christ that has faced uncertainties together throughout history. And as part of that body, we continue to work through this together. The Bible passage for today didn't really end, it simply stopped in the middle of the story. And unless you choose to read ahead or know the story ahead, we're left not really knowing what happened to the ship, what perils lay ahead or potential happy ending. Likewise, we are only in the midst of our own story, too. We don't know what the future will bring, and more likely than not, it will be a mix of everything. But today, I encourage you to break some bread, to share a meal with someone, even if it's sharing some breadcrumbs with the birds outside your window, and to remember that you are never alone. Amen.